Welcome to the Real Estate Show on KMED. February 11th is our date. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys, with you. We're both real estate brokers with John L. Scott in Southern Oregon, and we get together with you once a week here on KMED to talk about well, all sorts of real estate-related issues and topics through almost eight years of doing this every weekend. I figure how many weekends that is, Joe Brett. I'm not sure. It's a lot of them. You know, that, and we're still here, which is really a good thing. And I don't do all that much on the weekends anyway <laughs> no, anymore. We, <laughs> so I did fix up my house. Because we're, take here, care, we, yeah, we're here. Take care of my roof and my grounds and things like that. And boy, have our listeners, have we learned a whole lot of stuff over these years uh, to be smart real estate consumers, which is our goal. And today's probably a perfect example yep. of that uh, with our guest, uh, who, who's joined us, Werner Costanza from Better Built Construction in Medford, because we all... We, we, We've talked about this, haven't we, a lot, about deferred maintenance. Uh, and, and if you got deferred maintenance coming in your property, boy, you're going to pay for it. When you go to sell it, I don't care. You know, you're going to pay for it at the end. And so it's better off to really keep stuff up uh, rather than have to tear down and redo, right? I mean, it yeah. makes sense and, to me. Then it just makes your living experience in your home yeah. even better and you enjoy it even more. Yeah. And taking care of it is is just a, it pays you in the long run. Well, I met uh, our guest, Werner, uh, uh, in our neighborhood in Ashland because his company was doing a, put in a new deck for my neighbor, Sandra, across the street from me. And these guys parked pizza, it. Pizza nosy neighbor. Uh, no, 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 I wasn't that much. <laughs> but they I had, you were able to, they were able to park their, car, their trucks in my driveway. Right. So I got to know these guys. And then what they were doing is they come and look at my, come and look at my deck. And the next oh, thing boy. I knew, I have a new deck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that tells you. Right? Your deck was ripe for help. Werner, is that, is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, that's basically what happened is <laughs> we parked our cars there. And then all of a sudden, my dad's like, hey, we need another, another contract because we got another client for another deck. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm talking to Pete and like, okay, your deck's done. So yeah. it went right ahead and went smoothly. And I think the deck's awesome. Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it and, really is. And I, I got, <laughs> as I stopped by for our business deal, Feelings, uh, at Pete's house. I saw you guys out there working in the pouring cold oh, I did rain too. and just plowing through. And the finished product is just eye candy. It's just stunning to drive up the road yeah. and see it uh, wrapped yeah. around the side yeah. of your home. And, and what I liked about them was that in the rain and the cold and the first part in that January time there, I was like, you guys, you guys should go home. <laughs> just, you know, it's, I wouldn't <laughs> go outside. My, my guys want to work. That's what they want. <laughs> yeah. My guys want to work that's and exactly that's all they, they want to do. And, and they're happy with work and they're happy what they do. Yeah. And so they, they just go at it. And, and they're like me, and they the don't weather, make any money at home. And the weather didn't affect them at all, what they were doing. And no, so they, they actually were out there. Wait, wait, it was great to see it. It anyway. was a great process. So, so tell me about, first of all, Werner, uh, uh, you and your dad have the business or started. Tell us how you started Better Built Construction, because I think it's a great story for people who want to hear. Yeah, so almost five years ago, we started, we decided to start Better Built Construction. My dad was working construction. He's been doing it for like 20 years or something. Right. And he was working with someone else and they closed down. And so we decided to get it started after my freshman year in college. And he's like, hey, we should start a business. You're going to school for business. And so why not get it started? And you know, after freshman year, you think that you know everything about business. <laughs> and you think, you know, so I'm like, yeah, you know, perfect, let's do it. So uh, I started investigating everything and what I needed to do to be a general contractor in the state of Oregon, everything legal. And, and it was fun, it was a fun experience. Uh, they told me that it would take up to six months to get everything situated. Mm -hmm. I did it in like two weeks. <laughs> and so, yeah. So then after that, we started the business. And so my dad already knew the construction industry. You know, I just needed to start learning more about the business side of it on the construction, like estimating okay. and scheduling and stuff like that. And so then I started learning that and my dad already is doing construction. I would go back to school and manage it from school and do emails, phone so calls and everything. There. Wow. Yeah. Now, and, and where did you, where did you learn, go to school at to learn all that? I went to BYU. And BYU has, you said a construction major. Major? Is that yeah. is that right? Yeah. So in BYU, Idaho, they actually have a construction management major. It's actually top 10 in the nation. Wow. And they have a whole major on it. And you learn scheduling, estimating. You learn everything like that. Now, can you also pound a nail in? I mean, can you do all of that too? Yeah. So there's actually a course at BYU Idaho. It's called Construction 120. I, I'm sure they changed the name by now. <laughs> but you actually build a little tiny house with another group, really? and so you actually learn jo all that. Joe stuff. needs to take that class. Oh, man. Maybe you can take construction. Give me a hammer. <laughs> Give me a power saw. I'll try. I'll, I'll try and see if yeah. they let them go okay. for oh, yeah. one semester. I'll, the show starts when I get my hands on a yeah. power saw. Yeah. I start to tear it. We'll, stuff. Yeah. we'll see. We'll see if you can pass Construction 120. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd start at 101. Uh, Maybe work yeah. my way but up. But what you did, what the, the point being, Werner, is that you became a skilled labor. I mean, you became the thing that we hear 
that is in such demand in that is people with skills. And you've learned that. I mean, good for you. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's a great blessing, honestly. And I always want to learn more. And so once I keep learning, and the more I learn, the more I go into it. Mm-hmm. So if I learn something small, then I'm like, okay, there's something, it has to be something bigger. <laughs> and so how can I help? And I want to help my community. That's what I came back for, to mm-hmm. help my community. And Medford's growing. Well, and, and, I want yeah, to grow and you're providing good paying jobs to, to, the, to, to the people who work for you. And how are you able to find the skilled labor? Uh, has it been difficult for you in your business for you guys? Or te- just tell us that, that, that part of it. So we decided to take the Google approach where it's, they work by reference. So we, when we found someone, we actually found our first worker and he said, hey, I'm looking for work. I don't know anything about construction, but I'm a quick learner. Okay. We're like, okay, you know, we'll give you a chance because everybody deserves a chance. And we decided to give him a chance. And every single night he would go and read his tape measure and memorize uh-huh. how the tape measure worked. And he came out to be great. He's our, you know, manager now. Manager. Wow. Yeah, well, and okay. so from there, we decided, hey, we're going to work on referrals. So if you work on referrals, then you refer someone and bring it to us. And he gets a six-month trial period. After that, after six months, we sit down again and see how he's going and see how he's doing. Mm-hmm. After that, if we say, hey, you know what? It's not really working. Sorry, okay. six months. But usually if it's on referral, then people, because yeah. their own their own reputation is on the line, then they say, hey, I'm going to recommend someone good. And so, so you we, like the workers that you've, yeah. that you've trained here from the Valley. Yes. And they become skilled workers I, themselves. I'm, I'm My my ears just lit up when you talked about that program at BYU-Idaho because uh, the Home Builders Association of uh, Southern Oregon has been partners in our real estate show. And they have pointed out for years the lack of skilled laborers we have after oh, the yeah. recession. We were left in a void where we had about four skilled laborers and contractors and subcontractors for every 10 we had when we were booming in the mid-2000s yeah. there. I think for young men uh, looking for family oh, yeah. wage opportunities in Southern yeah. Oregon, maybe a, a program like that where you could you could come out of that ready to be your own contractor. That, well, that's RC, RC, there, okay, RC, We're RC trying to supplement to that locally right, as we'll, well. See. And I think that just underscores uh, what a need there is out there and what right. opportunities could be created for young men like yourself and, and their families. Yeah. So you guys do a lot of different things. We talked about roofs and yeah. decks. We're going to talk about those mostly. But you also do other things. So what else do you do besides... Kind of roofs and decks, which I would think that would be enough to keep you occupied like forever. Yeah, no. So we do uh, fences. Fences, okay. Yeah, All so right. privacy fences, cedar, vinyl, chain link, okay. uh, decks, any type of deck, remodels inside, either entire home remodels, kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels, whatever it is inside that okay. you need remodeled, and then new construction as well. So we can build a house. So you can start. Yeah, from we can scratch. from nothing. So from scratch, all the oh. excavation, all the way to the roof. And here's the key to your house and have a happy life. All right. Wow. What do you do the most of, do you think? We do mostly, we do most fences, decks, and remodels. Fences, mm-hmm. fences, decks, and remodels. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that, 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 yeah. Well, that'd keep you busy too, no matter yeah. what it would do. Yeah. And so what do you see? I mean, what are the issues and problems that when people call you, uh, or say, you know, we need you to come and look at something. What are kind of the things that they're uh, you're up against when you when you do this? The conditions. Just tell us what what, what you generally see out there. So a lot of people call us for decks, uh, for decks or their fences. They say, hey, you know what? My deck is rotting underneath, or I feel like it's kind of wobbly. I uh-huh. need you to come take a look at it. And we go out there, and usually it's because they buy the house with the deck already there. Yeah. So they don't know how many years the deck has been built before. Right. And so then when you when we get there, it's like, hey, your deck's already rotted. It's already been here for twenty years. You need to change it. Right. So that's that's usually what happens, and the fences as well. Fences is more noticeable because the fence is either falling down or straight up, <laughs> right? So yeah, it's <laughs> leaning way over. Yeah, so that's I mean uh, it's a, it's more noticeable. But on the deck, in the wind. Uh-huh. on the deck, a lot of people call us because they're like, hey, I need, I think I need to replace that. I don't know, and we're straight and honest with them. We say, hey, if you just change the deck boards, you'll be fine, because the structure is still same, it's still good, it's still visibly uh-huh. good. And sometimes we go, no, you need to change the whole thing because it's been here for twenty years. Is in in the lifespans of these things, you say twenty years. Can I? Can I? Is that generally the way it, they are? Generally, they say twenty years, but usually with this Oregon weather that we have and rain okay. and snow, especially now when it rains and snow on the same day, then uh-huh. we get you know you get like twelve to fifteen on a good deck. So think about that, Joe. If 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 uh, twenty years is generally the lifespan, that would make that any house. Any house that you have prior to 1997, 
if it was built to right. get a deck before that. It's probably it, it, probably it may due. be it yeah. may be due for something repairs or something to make it extend the life a little bit longer, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, and, and there is there an in between where my deck's not rotting out yet, but just needs a little bit of help and support, or or is it just easier just to get get a brand new one? Just well, what, this yeah, is yeah. this is what we tell people all the time. We say, hey, if you're gonna spend four thousand dollars on repairing your deck, and then Four years later, you're going to call me and say, hey, I need to replace my deck and spend another $8,000 uh-huh. on a deck. Then you spent twelve instead of, at the beginning, only spending eight. So uh-huh. in the long run, it's cheaper than if you actually just, you know, repair and replace. But obviously, it depends on everybody's budget and how tight sure, they are yeah, with money, yeah, sure. right? Because sometimes you can't afford the eight, you can only afford half. But most of the time, if we tell them, hey, if you can afford it, just change it. Because in the long run, you're going to call me again and say, hey, I need you to replace my deck. And I want to feel bad because you just spent $4,000 uh-huh. on repairing something you're uh-huh. going to tear down anyway. Yeah. Does it matter? Can I extend the life depending on how much sun and rain gets on the deck? Yeah. Does that make a difference? It does because you can add like stain, for example. Like on right. your deck, we're going to add a stain. We're going to add stain. We're going to stain on your deck. And so that improves the water factor, right? And all right. the stuff like the moisture and everything like that on the deck. So then it that improves it. the life. Yeah, it yeah, seals yeah. it. Yeah. So then that improves the life of the deck. So instead of 12 to 15, now you probably get, you know, 17 years okay. on the deck. So that improves the life and also how you maintain it. If you maintain your deck, because if you stain it, you stain it the first year. Okay. And then you stain it two years after that. Okay. And then three years after that, then you'll be good on mm. the deck. Okay. But if you just stain it once and you leave it, it's, well, it's, it's, it doesn't matter because you're not matter. you're not really helping the deck. You're not helping the wood nah. adjust to the climate. Now you're gonna remind oh. me, you will remind me of that in two years <laughs> that we gotta I gotta do that again. You yeah. know? Now, this is a mark. This yeah. is a marketing major. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now now why do you why do you you tell me that you hand brush stuff on on a deck not yes. to roll it right? Yeah, yeah. So we. We do everything how we would want it in our house. And that's our motto is if we wouldn't like it, then why would our clients like it? Okay. So we hand brush everything because then we pay, pay special attention to detail on the deck. For example, okay. on your railing underneath, right, a lot, if you spray it, you're not going to get everything underneath. Ah, but okay. if you hand brush it, then you get underneath on the balusters and everything around okay. it. So that way, every little crack is there with stain. Mm-hmm. And then when the rain comes, it just slides right off instead of going in between. Now, one time I painted my deck. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I painted it the same color in my house. Mm-hmm. That's not good. People should not paint. Like, put paint on their deck, right? Well, I mean, you can paint it. I prefer stain. I like stain better. Okay. But nowadays, there's paint that already comes like a stain form of color. Oh, okay. So it's, you know, water-based stain, and you can add different colors on it. Oh, okay. And so it looks like it's painted, but it's still stain. Oh, okay. So some of that can be that mm-hmm. way. Yeah. And what was interesting, too, when you came, uh, and you were talking about 20 years or 25-year lives on decks, when, when Werner looked at my deck... He immediately said, my deck is at least 40 years old, Joe, Wow! because of the certain railing that was on the deck, uh-huh. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, yeah. now, I didnn't know that. I mean, how, would, how would you know? So 40 years it's been there at least. That's right? yeah, that's, because that's, they don't make that, you can't get that railing, that certain type of rock that's iron, like a, I guess That's like a car freak that just looks at the taillights and tells you it's a 57 <laughs> Chevy. Yeah, yeah. You knew that. You knew that, that, and, and you knew yeah, that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's the different things that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, my deck looks pretty good. But then when you actually bring someone in, they're like, no, your deck's been here for a while. Huh. Like, you need to change it. So then they're like, okay, it's different. Yeah, and, and people who use, because um, I asked uh, I asked Werner again, well, should I use wood or should I use, I heard about Trex, right? We all know about that word. I asked you that when I first heard you were going to do you your deck. Yeah. You were going to do a Trex deck? Well, yeah, I know. Yeah. And so what was the first thing I asked Werner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wood or Trex? And what did you say? Um, Honestly, Trex. I, we use something called Fiberon, which is almost the same as okay, Trex. Okay. Um, we just like the material better. That's most co- that's more costly than cedar. So cedar is less costly and looks nice. And if you stain it, then you're mm-hmm. good to go. Mm-hmm. The composite, you don't have to maintain it. Or you just leave it there and you sweep it or you do whatever. But it's a lot more costly. Just, just what's the difference of something like that? I mean, just just tell people. What, what, what's the difference? Is it double it? Is it? A... No, not double. I think it goes um, around 35% more expensive. Okay, 35% mm-hmm. more. And does it last? Uh, does, the, does the fake wood stuff last longer than a cedar deck? No, they, they say it still lasts around the 20 years because the structure of it underneath is still wood. It's still the pressure treated. Oh, and okay. so then mm-hmm. it still lasts the same amount. It's the only thing is you don't have to maintain it like you do a cedar deck. 
Now, when you talk to people, because I know that you do these decks all over the Rogue Valley, yeah. What are what what types are you putting in mostly then? A lot of people are going with the composite. With the composite, yeah, with the composite because they don't have to maintain it. They don't have to stain so it. So the don't issue have to do is anything. they don't want it. See, aren't we something in our society today that we don't want to stain our thing? And we're going to take care of it one time. I'll pay thirty five percent more. And then we're going to mess with it. All right. But now, you know, I mean, the margin the margin's not that big though. I mean, only like ten percent more people prefer the composite than oh, okay. the cedar right. because a lot of people still like the cedar. They like the look of the cedar, the feel of the cedar. Yeah. It's so it's my deck is so beautiful, Joe. I can't even walk on it. Yet. I won't even walk on it. I wouldn't let the dogs on it. No, He's afraid to walk on it. No, uh, don't. Not with muddy feet, especially. <laughs> We're with Warner Costanza from Better Built Construction in Medford, talking about roofs, remodels, decks, fences, and everything else to make your home better. We're coming right back to the real estate estate show right after this the real estate show rolls on on kmed february 11th is our date pete belcaster with you here and thanks for joining us on this uh kind of cold wintry i spill february date but uh isn't usually in february we get about a week of 70 degree temperatures so i don't think it's going to happen this year it's uh the rain my goodness isn't everything soaked and wet and well, anyway, uh, I guess it's Oregon and it's winter, and these are the things we have. I wanted just to give you some stats here as we're talking with Werner Costanza from Better Built Construction today on the Real Estate Show. Those latest SOMLS stats that came out for the month of January, okay, just, uh, comparing January of, of 2016 with January 2017. This is how crazy this market is right now. Pending sales, and pending sales are down 14% uh, from a year ago. New listings are down 23% from a year ago. Average days in the market, I mean, with little inventory down to 43 days, that's even a 14% uh, change in the whole thing. And what's, uh, what's, what's, yeah, let me get one more thing. What's interesting about it is the, the available homes per buyer continues to drop now. It was down 41% from a year ago. There's three available homes per buyer overall in the county, in Jackson County, in January. That's amazingly low. I mean, a, a normal market is six months of worth. And the month's supply of inventory, which the normal is a six-month supply, we're down 45% from a year ago. We have a less than a two-month supply of inventory overall in the county. I mean, that's really an amazing statistic, which just shows you how the market is right now. We're with Werner Costanza from Better Built Construction in Medford. And well, we learned from Werner and his dad who started this business five years ago. And they were, do a lot of decks and fences and things like that, repair, remodels, and, and all those sorts of stuff. And Werner's done my new deck in my house, and that's how we got to know each other and wanted to wanted him to share with you some of the some of the pitfalls and things that he sees because he sees it every day, as you can very well imagine. Anyway, we're talking about the decks there. What what, what do you recommend that people do? How can we, you know, uh, again, you've talked about treks and or the, or the other kinds of things and cedar and wood versus this. And uh, what was the worst, uh, what was the worst thing you ever saw when someone called you up? And I know you get called a lot. Yeah, I mean, oh man, it's, this is a really hard one. <laughs> What's the worst one I've seen? There was a deck out in um, Ashland. And I'm not going to say where, it's you know, okay. who, right. yeah, it's it's confidential, right. it's right. but this person just wanted us to make the deck leveled again. So just put like some oh. posts and just level it so, level it, looks, it. so it looks nice. Uh -huh. And we're like, no, because if we put the post there, it's going to sag in the middle, right? <laughs> and so uh -huh. we're not going to put extra posts and then obviously it's not going to be up to code. And oh, so, then, okay. yeah, so then we decided that, hey, we're not going to do that. Either you redo your deck or we won't touch it. You won't touch it. And so I think that's the worst that I've seen that I can remember right off mm -hmm. the top of my head because well, we just got there and out of my, right when I saw it, I was like, yeah. okay, no, me and my dad were like, we need to change this. Now that's when, what we need to do now, it. Now, when people replace the deck, replace their decks, and of course, they're different sizes and everything. I understand that. Right. But you you told me that I should that I should have flashing. Uh, on my deck. Now, you raised my deck up and things like that, and you said I should put some flashing on it. Now, tell people what flashing is and, and what's, what's the reason. Should they consider a deck replacement? Should they consider adding that component to it? Yeah, so if your deck's attached to the house, we add flashing underneath for the siding, so that way the water doesn't get in between the siding and doesn't ruin what's behind the siding on your house. Mm. So that's that's one flashing, and then the other flashing is the deck for appeal, for it, so it looks nice, right? So the deck sometimes people don't add those finishing touches on the end of the deck, mm -hmm. so then it looks unfinished. You still see the framing, you still see everything from oh, the yeah. outside of the deck. So then if you put a flashing on the outside, then it looks nice, right? So that's more of a you know, nice appeal for the deck. However, though the flashing, what we were talking about your house, 
is in between the siding, right? So then that mm -hmm. way, when we put the deck and we put the flashing, the water goes through, but it just slides right off instead of getting into instead your going siding. Down exactly. The, 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 whatever that is there. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where you do that. Well, it looks really cool. It's, it's wonderful and it works. It obviously works uh, very well. I've often wondered uh, with, with so many different types of decks that are out there in different sizes, and some of them are on big, big uh, pylons, aren't they? I mean, you, yeah, you've really seen that kind of thing. Yeah. So we are right next to your house, right yeah. next to your house with the with the neighbor that you were mm -hmm. talking about. Hers was really high up, second floor, mm -hmm. and we had to, and it was cantilevered, so it was based off the frame from the house, oh, wow. right? And so what we had to do is change all of that and add some beams and bigger posts in order to hold it and attach it to the house and add that flashing as well so that mm -hmm. way the water doesn't get into it mm -hmm. and now, okay and what type of we'll back to the stain for just a second what, what would you advise people what types of stain should they use on a deck and can i can i even if i've got an older deck right now can i still go ahead and stain it if i need to or something like that yeah yeah you can definitely do it if we see that it's in good shape we just tell you hey just stain it so what we do is we power wash it oh, okay, and make sure, sure we take everything out and give a good wash and use some chemicals so that way the wood or the toxins in the wood comes out and then we wash it again oh, okay and then we stain it and you choose your stain you can choose a water-based stain which you can add different colors on oil-based stain, which is that stain that normally everybody sees that's natural wood, color, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so you can choose either one or either one. Either Both are pretty good. And then you, it depends on if you want color or not. And like some mm -hmm. people want green or some say, people so, want so white. You, it can be green or white decks. or So when you see that kind of thing, and not necessarily maybe paint, but it may be a stain that is just colored now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so okay. It, it's now like it's not like before where you know, hey, I only have stain and it has to be this color. Now there's a lot of different colors that you can choose from, and you just add it to your deck. And after being power washed, you can add any stain you want to your deck, and actually increases the life of the deck. Mm -hmm. Tell me about fences uh, and and how the different types of styles that you're seeing people uh, today uh, you know, asking you to do. Because I don't think of fences very often because I don't have a fence around my place and stuff. Yeah. But but boy, I sure see that when we go show people property <laughs> yeah. and we go looking at them in real estate, there's fences and they're all sort. I guess I've started thinking about this. They're everything under the sun. So tell me about what the fencing, how you, what's your criteria there? So on the fences, honestly, it depends on the person's budget and like everything else in construction. <laughs> sure, yeah. And it depends on the type of area that there are because some HOAs require a different type of fence. Oh, sure. Right? Because every house has to look the same. But usually everybody wants a cedar fence. Either it's flat top, like shadow box in fence, okay. or a dog ear style fence. Cedar fences. Yes. Th that that's that's the just... that's the cheapest um okay. cheapest style of fence that you're gonna get aside from field fencing. That's you know more like horse fences, stuff like oh, okay. that. But in the city, especially in Ashland, they use more cattle panel fences. Or okay. they use they're just panels, cedar right? fences. They're, they're, they're panels. Just, they're yep. panels. Panels with two by four squares galvanized, you know, metal, basically. Mm -hmm. And then you just add it because then that way you still get the nature of Ashland going through. Okay. But then you also prevent the deer from coming in, which is a big uh, Ashland problem. Which is problem. a big thing, yeah. And vinyl fencing, is that something that people are choosing to do or more natural kinds of things we just talked about? Uh, a lot of people choose more natural, more wood. Um, vinyl, mm -hmm. though, is a big is a big fencing mm -hmm. option. However, that's for bigger, bigger places instead bigger of a places. home. Places, oh, okay. exactly. So, like for example, on Foothills Road in Medford, the golf course they have vinyl because they don't yeah. have to maintain it. They don't have to do anything. It's just there and it looks nice. It's kind of like that that uh, deck stuff. What exactly. Is, what, what did you call uh, that stuff that you composite, called? It? It's composite decking. Composite it's fiber decking. On the, yeah. Same thing, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> now that's You're the, just gonna pay more. <laughs> exactly. But you don't necessarily get a, extend the life of it more. Yeah, and that's the thing too. So with the vinyl, obviously the posts don't rot. You know, right. they're there. But however, over time. They start because it's plastic and what happens to plastic over time with the sun and the it's, weather it, and everything, yeah. it starts deteriorating. So it's the yeah. same thing, but however, you don't have to maintain it like a wood de a wood fence. Mm -hmm. Now, were you busy? This is just a curiosity. Were you busy with fences in the last couple of years, especially with uh, with the recreational marijuana, the marijuana world that we came into? Were you doing a lot of fencing in that particular uh, area? Um, Honestly, 
some a few people called us, but uh-huh. we weren't as busy as some other people I okay. hear that are busy. Okay. Maybe they're just yeah. telling me they're busy. <laughs> but hey, but we actually did a few. You did a few. And okay. we did a few. Yeah. And so it's I mean, it's just like any other fence. We treat mm-hmm. it just like any other fence. It's just instead of six feet high, that's to be eight foot high because the, that's the county. Mm-hmm. County re- requires eight foot high. And so mm-hmm. we do eight foot high fences and instead of four by four posts, which is normally what everybody uses in the fence. We do four by sixes because it's stronger for the wind. For the or for the wind. And for sure. the wind. Yeah. Because in the wind, you know, the wind comes down, especially out in those fields, out in the rural areas. They come strong, and so they want oh, to protect yeah. everything. Well, you know, you, if you have a good fence, I mean, it's all about curb appeal, so much of it. And a, f- a good fence, a beautiful fence, it can really oh, yeah. enhance the value of your property. That's for sure. Hey, we got one more segment to go. We're with Werner Costanza from Better Bill Construction in Medford, talking roofs and decks and fences and well how to extend the life of the things you have around your property we're coming right back to kmed right after this the real estate show rolls on on kmed for february 11th here in 2017 pete bell castro with you hope you're having a good weekend make something make something happen this weekend positive go take a look at uh, some houses maybe uh, call your real estate broker don't forget any real estate advice we're always happy to help you joe or i you can write us at pete at realestateshoworegon.com. We've got a lot, so always fun to meet our listeners and uh, of our radio show and uh, visit with you. And many uh, times, uh, well, sh- uh, sell your properties or sh- uh, sell you a property. Anyway, here today on the Real Estate Show, Werner Costanza from Better Bill Construction in Medford has joined us today. And we were learning a lot about uh, preparations of how to keep decks and fences going and all that kind of thing in your property to keep the Hanson in value. And you got to have good curb appeal as well. We're in a market, especially right now, where inventory is really low. We talked about how low it was in in uh, the three month period between November and January, November of last year and January of this year. Uh, let's see. It looks like they're down to six hundred and sixty uh, listings that were in the MLS uh, last month. Okay, six hundred and sixty. That's down eighteen percent from a year ago. So that just tells you again how much. That has changed the market, and the best part about the market, which I, which, which is really cool, is that distressed sales. Remember those we used to, so we used to talk about them all the time on the show. They now make up less than eight uh, percent of the market in sales, r- short sales or uh, regular distressed uh, foreclosed properties. Anyway, Werner Costanza is here. Werner, so you, what you do is kind of take the. Uh, take places that need to be fixed up and made pretty again. And, and you can, you obviously can do that. We talked about fencing. We talked about, uh, uh about, um, uh, decks and things. Just tell people about roofs j- just for a minute, because that's also, I mean, right now I can imagine all the calls coming in about leaking roofs and roofs that people have seen so much water on them. Uh, preparation or taking care of roofs. Tell what people should be doing there as well. On the roofs is hard, right? They because, are hard. Because, the roof, you can't really patch up like a deck or stain like a deck or, you know, yeah. patch up like a fence. A roof is if you have a leakage, sometimes the leakage, you think that it's on the north side, but then it's actually on the south side <laughs> oh. that went all the way the other across the house. Mm-hmm. So roofs is really hard to take care of because there's a certain thing with roofs that once it starts deteriorating, the whole entire thing starts deteriorating. It's like a domino effect. Mm-hmm. And so on roofs, what, I, what we tell our clients is, hey, you know what, if you start noticing that you need a new roof, then might as well just change it. You don't have to get the most expensive roof, but at least you get something to cover your house and protect the house. Because if you get a leakage from, you know, the top, mm-hmm. the all the rest of it is going to get... Do, yeah. Should people wait? I mean, I, I, I don't know this. Should people wait until, you know, if you have an older roof and it's not leaking, you say, well, why don't I have to replace it? But right, I mean, is that is it, should you wait until you see a leak or something? No, before you that, replace? that's too late. Not, that's too late. <laughs> that's too late because then it, the damage could be bigger. And then you're talking about the insulation underneath, the drywall okay. underneath, the paint, everything like that. So now, if you notice that your house, if you notice that your roof is starting to look older, starting to get some greenish on the it. top, the moss, the moss, on. exactly. Yeah. So if you start noticing that on top, just call someone. Just call me like, hey, I, I need to get an idea. Or you can go into a roofing company that sells mm-hmm. roofs, and this is what my roof looks like. And they'll be honest with you. I mean, most people will be honest with you. If you call us, we'll be honest with you and say, yeah, you need a new roof, or this can last another year. Because sometimes you don't know how old the roof is either. Exactly. If you bought the place. Now, people, I've heard people say, I got a 20-year roof. I got a 30-year roof. I got a 50-year roof. 
Is that can there be a roof that can last fifty years? Actually, we installed one that they they guarantee fifty years. Fifty years. Fifty years. It, it. It's called a lifetime roof, but they only guarantee fifty years because you know if someone that's fifty years old puts fifty, 50 years old, <laughs> in their lifetime, the roof is the roof is you know still there. Yeah. But it's actually a really strong, durable roof. And it's really thick compared to the other ones really? for the basic homes. And do, and, and do you do, do you, when you install sometimes if you put a new roof on a place? I've seen a lot of like the tile roofs versus the composite roofs. Which do you which do you like better, or that people should consider? I like tile. I like tile roofs. I, more spendy, more expensive. Yeah. But on your house, it looks a lot nicer. We okay. have that on our house. Okay. We have the red tile roof, and it looks a lot nice. You like the tile roof? Yeah, yeah. Composite roofs, though, there's different grades and different kinds of them, correct? Yeah. Yeah, there's different everything for roof. I mean, if you go out to a roof that sells roofing, a roofer that sells roofing, like a roofing company, is it R&S Supply, they have all the samples there, and there's like 25 different samples of roof. Now, the one thing I've heard from from different roofers guys who who, who I've talked with is sometimes people will say they, they, they hire them and they just want them to put a roof over the old roof. And, yeah. And, and now, and I just can't imagine you doing that because we're trying no. to save a few dollars because what you're doing to me is you're adding all the heavy weight yeah, of no. this new roof on top of already old roof. That doesn't seem like yeah, it makes no, sense. No, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that because sometimes you don't know about the plywood underneath, right? Yeah. The plywood underneath could be rotted. The vapor barrier underneath could be messed up or be ripped or be doing something, be rotted as well. Mm -hmm. And so then you add another roof on top. Well, now you didn't fix the problem. You just fixed the leakage problem, but you didn't fix the problem that's going to cause later on because something can collapse inside. And I would go think if you're going to go sell that place and you've got two roofs underneath there. Yeah, it's not a good someone's going to find that out, that's not going to be very good. Exactly. I just think the extra weight of the of the additional roof, because those those panels of those uh, those roof pieces are heavy. Yeah, no, I don't suggest that. And we, I mean, we honestly don't suggest that. Yeah. If you say, hey, if you can't afford it, then let's try and look for a cheaper roof. Maybe you don't have to change the plywood or anything like that. But, hey, let's look for something else because we don't want to just Mickey Mouse a problem, right? right. We want to actually fix the problem so then that way you call us for another project instead of repairing the one we did. Because you don't want to go, yeah, the worst thing you do is want to go back and redo something you've already done. Exactly. That's, and I hate, I agree. we hate repairs. <laughs> you don't want to do, do it that way. <laughs> exactly. Do it right the first time and get it right. I mean, yeah. Because you're spending, of course, you know, people in your home, it's the most expensive thing that we're going to own. And, and sometimes you have to put money out to keep it, to keep it up. Yeah, uh, and I think decks are certainly one of them that with that's out there, and I can't think of think of all the decks that are out there that are older than twenty years that you know may need some may need some help, or even thirty and like mine forty and even older than mine. I'm sure that are out there. Yeah, and not even that too, like the decks and the fences outside and the roof, but even inside too, like updating. Yeah, you know, instead of the tile countertops, I add some granite countertops in there. Mm -hmm. And though granite is not that expensive anymore. Bathrooms. Bathrooms and kitchens. And kitchens. that adds value to your house. Like, you know, yeah. you're a real estate guy. So. You, well, it is true. I mean, you if you want a top dollar, uh, the more you can update and keep your home up, the more dollars you're going to get at the end. Exactly. Versus having somebody come back and do that. I wonder how can someone get a hold of you guys? I know you get lots of calls from people. I know you're really busy at Better Built Construction, but how can someone find you if they want to? They can go online at bbconstructionmedford.com or even just Google Better Built Construction or give us a call at 541-301-7098. Or right. send us an email over at estimates at bbconstructionmedford.com. Estimates at bbconstructionmedford.com. Well, good. Mm -hmm. It was great to have you here, and I can't wait to oh, see you. Oh, yeah, it was you. great it's, to be uh, here. You know, I love your work. The guys that you have work for you love love that. They're they're great craftsmen, and they do beautiful work. And I can see why people want you to come and, and, oh, and, and be with them. I love being here. Okay? That's awesome. Werner, Werner Costanza from Better Built Construction in Medford does a great job, and I certainly recommend him if you need him for any help. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show for February 11th. Have a great week, everybody. I'm Pete Belcaster. We'll talk to you next Saturday. God bless you all. You've been listening to The Real Estate Show on KMED Radio, presented by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, along with John L. Scott Real Estate of Southern Oregon and Bank 34 Mortgage. For guest contact information, download our free app, or to watch a past show, visit us online at realestateshoworegon.com. This show is produced by Table Rock Productions. Join us again next weekend for Southern Oregon's one and only real estate show on KMED. And thank you for making the real estate show part of your weekend.